Hi, and welcome to this Lightboard series video. Today, we're going to talk about hyperconverged infrastructure resiliency. We're going to talk about the two leading products in the market, which is VMware vSAN, as well as Nutanix AOS. We're also going to cover off the two different architecture types with vSAN, which is the original storage architecture, and now the latest and greatest express storage architecture. So we're going to talk about the operations reserve, the host rebuild reserve, and then for AOS, we're going to talk about the reserve rebuild capacity and why these are really important for day two operations. Let's get started. Okay, let's look at this typical four node example. If we're deploying VMware OSA, we don't have this construct of a storage pool. We have disk groups. Um, now disk groups are a bit less flexible, a bit less resilient uh, than the storage pool architecture. So what we're going to talk about today is even more critical for those who are still on or are considering deploying OSA due to hardware constraints or things like that. But we're going to focus uh, for this presentation on ESA and Nutanix AOS, which both deploy a similar storage pool architecture. So in this case, we've got four nodes. They're all contributing usable capacity to this storage pool. Um, if we were to say we had 25 terabytes of capacity per node, that would mean we would have 100 terabytes in our storage pool. So how much capacity can we actually use in the real world? Well, if we have four nodes and we use more than three nodes worth of capacity, we lose our N plus one, which means we, can't, we can potentially not recover from a failure scenario. So we can also prevent ourselves from doing maintenance as well. So realistically, similar to a RAID 5, uh, where we've got N minus one capacity, the same is really true for any HCI product. So in this case, our storage pool, our realistic usable capacity limit is 75 terabytes. And how we get to 75 is the 100 total minus one of the nodes capacity. And that's where we get our 75. Now, if we were to go above this number and we were to perform maintenance, then we potentially, if that node didn't come up from maintenance, we would remain in a degraded state until the hardware was replaced. Now, this is obviously not a desirable scenario uh, because it leads to higher risk of subsequent failures, downtime, or data loss. So really important that we don't go over this threshold. But none of these products actually protect us from this scenario by default. So it's important as architects and engineers and sysadmins that we understand the capabilities that the products have to protect us from these scenarios. So starting with vSAN, we have what's called the operations reserve, um, which is a very small amount of reserve capacity to enable balancing across nodes and things like that. So it, it helps us, but it doesn't protect us from the failure scenario of losing a node. So there's another option which does just that, which is called the host rebuild reserve, which effectively reserves that node's worth of capacity to tolerate failures. So highly recommended that you enable both of these. In fact, to enable host rebuild reserve, you must also have operations reserve enabled. So very important we do this. Now, if we talk about Nutanix, exactly the same concept. We've got a storage pool. We've got nodes contributing to the capacity. If we overfill the cluster, upgrades may not work, uh, performance may degrade, and certainly we can't tolerate those failures and restore to that resilient state. So very important in the AOS world, we enable the host rebuild capacity option. Uh, and this makes sure that the amount of capacity that is presented to you as usable is this 75 terabyte number, which is realistically all that you should be using. All right, let's talk about some of the risks associated with not enabling the settings we've just discussed. So let's take the most obvious one. If we don't have enough capacity in our cluster, we're unable to perform a self-heal from a failure. So obviously with HCI, it's a very resilient architecture. That's one of the huge benefits of HCI. If we don't design with that N plus one in mind, we might not be able to self-heal, putting, putting us at significant risk. The next one is consider day two operations. You're a sysadmin, you're performing an upgrade. We potentially can't perform an upgrade because we don't have enough capacity to perform that upgrade, or the upgrade itself might actually fail due to an outer space condition. So this puts your day two operations at risk, uh, potentially leading to support cases and downtime and other things. 
Um, another one, um, such as without operations reserve, um, vSAN might not be able to balance the storage correctly. Uh, the same is true for AOS, it might not be able to balance the storage efficiently as well. So in those scenarios you can lead to performance degradation uh, and again risk of issues down the track. And the last one is potential inability to even tolerate failures at all. If you're too full and you've performed maintenance, you might not even have second copies of some of your data uh, in order to be able to tolerate a simple disk failure. So without these settings enabled, you put yourself at risk of all these different scenarios, which are really undesirable. So the cost of having these settings is your N minus one capacity, but the pro is you actually get all the features of these products. So let's cover off some of those advantages. All right, let's talk advantages. So pretty obvious, I think very leading from what we've talked about already, the ability to self heal. Obvious, but extremely important. If we have a failure in this environment, we want to be able to self heal back to a resilient state so that we can potentially tolerate another drive failure or even another node failure, depending on your cluster size. So this one to me is an absolute no brainer. The ability to perform upgrades. Obviously with things like ransomware, security, performance updates, all these things that HCI helps us with, we lose a lot of the value of these products if we can't get these frequent updates and we can't do them in a timely manner. So obviously being able to perform these upgrades is very important from a compliance perspective, performance, resiliency perspective. So knowing that we can always perform an upgrade with these settings enabled, to me, very important. The third one, performance is always important. Now, if we fill this cluster up too far, our performance will certainly degrade, but in the event we lose a node and we've run out of capacity, um, our performance can also degrade significantly. So really important, if we have these settings enabled, the cluster will perform at its best, which is of course what we want for our business critical applications. And the fourth one, capacity management. With this storage pool in place, capacity management is so much easier with HCI compared to traditional storage. If we don't enable these settings, we lose some of that ease and we lose some of that value. So we want to enable these settings day one. We don't want to turn them on day two or day 365. The moment you install your environment, you should be turning these settings on and you then know your maximum usable capacity is this 75 number. Right? We don't then see 100 and go, oh, we can use 100 and then feel like we've lost something when we enable these settings. Day one, turn it on and we know what our usable capacity is, which means we don't need to worry about capacity management for performance or for upgrades or for self-healing. These to me make life so much easier and are well justified. All right, in summary, Designed for a minimum of N plus one with either Nutanix or vSAN, whether it's OSA or ESA, the same rule applies. Make sure we enable these settings always and do it day one. Don't wait till day two or day 365. And lastly, don't turn them off. If you're running low on capacity, you need to make sure you're looking at your capacity management uh, process and procedures and you need to start ordering that new hardware um, otherwise, you're just going to paint yourself into a corner and get yourself in trouble. So don't turn them off uh, as a get out of jail free card because it'll just put you into more trouble later. So assume that that 75 terabytes is your maximum uh, and plan accordingly. Thanks for joining me on this series.